One, two, Freddy Krueger's on blue. I know, bad pun. But this is A Nightmare on Elm Street that has finally been released on Blu-ray here in the United States. I say finally because it has so far only been available in Canada for an Alliance release, and many people have spent a lot of money just to purchase it from Canada, which is now out of print at the moment due to this release. But let me just say that it is pretty much well worth the wait, especially for considering the material that we have have to work with here. Judging by the back right here, all the features from the Infinifilm release have been ported over to this Blu-ray, in which you have about two commentaries, one from Wes Craven and from uh, Heather Camp, who played Nancy, and you also have another commentary with Wes Craven and Robert England, who played, Fred who played Freddy Krueger in some of the cast, and Robert England Anytime he does a commentary, he does an incredible job because he has so many stories and so many quips. He's an it sounds like he's a really awesome guy. It also has um, a focus points, which was kind of like what the Infinite Film release had. You know, it had special features pop up here and there, and uh, really informative. You get to see the extended, the alternate scenes and whatnot. Um, three featurettes that act, that aren't too bad, and of course the trivia track that's been poured over. The majority of the features are on in are in 1080i HD themselves, so it isn't too bad. Um, let's open this up right around in here. The front is the same as the Infinifilm DVD release, minus the slip cover that we got, but it's okay. Open this up. What we have here is we have the disc. Then, of course, the important note is, you know, this Blu-ray player, yada, yada, yada. But the deal that's sealed it right here is that it comes with a little paper right here, this weird-feeling paper. What this is right here is it is a up to seven dollars and fifty cents off Nightmare on Elm Street ticket I mean a pass to the new Nightmare on Elm Street that's coming out within a few weeks so I wasn't gonna go see it at first but uh, hey with this you know what more do I have to lose the movie might be crap but uh, at least with this I won't know I won't feel ripped off so check this out here one look at the box but overall I'd say that um, it's not going to be the best Blu-ray that you're ever going to see. I mean, considering this was released in the 1980s, and you can only work out with so much material, but for a 1980s release, it actually does not look that bad. Warner did not DNR the hell out of this one like they did Lord of the Rings. They actually left it, you know, pretty solid. A lot, Some grain is left in there, but I do like grain, and that is shows, you know, it's, it gives the film kind of sort of its age. But the only problem, though, with the, um, with the Blu-ray is that it does make some of the effects like Freddy's... Um, like when Freddy sees Tina down the alleyway, he's screeching down the side of the walls. It does make things a lot more hokey. Like, it really does make the effects stand out. It's like they look really, really dated. But um, overall, I'd say it isn't too bad. The boiler room scene in general in the beginning looks very nice with its reds and whatnot. And But speaking of the boiler room scene, I wanted to bring out the sound as well. New Line, or I should say Warner, I should say New Line, um, has given us a DTS 7.1 for a Nightmare on Elm Street, which, you know, that's like taking it to a next level. Which, the boiler room scene, I wanted to point out in general, is it is a great way to show off your surround. Not because, you know, of explosions and whatnot, but in terms of atmosphere. When you have, um, you have steam coming out of nowhere, you have clinks, cranks, steps, when Freddy Krueger laughs, you know, to... You know, to, you know, off into the distance, or when Freddy does scratch his nails on the walls, you know, it kind of gives it a real, kind of a realistic nails on a chalkboard type sound. It's just so riveting. I dig it. But the only problem, though, is that it's great for atmosphere, but the majority of the rest of the film is nothing but dialogue and music, which the music sounds great, of course. Uh, the score for this, I love the score for this film. But, uh, Otherwise, new, they should have saved this, the DTS 7.1 for something else. I mean, we love it. I definitely love it. No complaints. But, you know, an action title, you know, is more preferred. I mean, I would have loved a DPS, DTS 5.1 for this. But uh, extras, you know, of course, you get everything from the Infinite Film release, which is the definitive release, you know, so grab that. And a lot of you may be wondering, it's like, well, SXC Runner, what if Warner does decide to ever release, you know, the big set and everything that contains all the Nightmare on Elm Street films? Well, I will tell you this. If I know Warner, they're more than like the original set for Nightmare on Elm Street... Um, did leave a lot to be desired. I mean, with exception of the first Nightmare, like, everything from number two to Freddy's Dead, I mean, I mean to Wes Craven's new Nightmare, um, lacked kind of an extra somewhat, and judging by that, I think Warner is going to be taking the rest of the Nightmare on Elm Street films and releasing them in those double packs that you see sometimes at Best Buy and whatnot. So, 
that's what I do believe will happen. So I'd say if you love A Nightmare on Elm Street, or if you want a free ticket to the new one that is coming out within a few weeks, um, this is the definitive version to grab. And I'd say wait until the double packs finally come out for the regular Nightmare on Elm Street Blues. So take care of yourself, guys. Sweet dreams.